Let's bring in Sam Amick. Does a great job covering the NBA for USA Today. Sam joins me here on the show. So, Sam, what's the latest that we know about the Kyrie, search, uh, Kyrie Irving situation in Cleveland? Chris, I, you know, listen, to me, it's it's uh, one of those things that it's not, I mean, it's pressing from a PR standpoint. It's pressing from a, you know, the optics uh, are not good. Uh, I don't think the Cavs, you know, have a pressing need to do a deal right now. And, you know, they you're talking about a guy that, that uh, is a star in this league and a guy who you, you've got to get maximum return. And so you've got to be patient. And so, you know, the, the clock is ticking though, because training camps around the corner and that's when the human component comes into play, right? Where the idea of him strolling into camp, looking LeBron in the eye and, you know, and, and the rest of those guys and, and moving forward with that is extremely uncomfortable. So, I mean, that to me is, is the, the kind of the time structure that we're talking about, but, but I don't personally know of anything hot and heavy right now that uh, that is progressing when it comes to an actual deal transpiring. Hey, look, I mean, right now, the whole situation to me strikes me as radioactive. Um, you know, you've got the, the the trade request coupled with all these reports, whether they're true, whether they're not, you know, stuff leaking out about the relationship uh, between LeBron and Kyrie Irving. It, you never want to deal from a position of weakness, right? You never want to you know, put a guy on the market when teams know that you have to trade him. So it makes sense to to sort of pump the brakes on this a little bit and, and sort of wait till maybe late August, early September before really digging into a deal. But I guess my question is, Sam, is is a deal a foregone conclusion to you? I mean, is there any possibility that this could be salvaged, that Kyrie Irving is back and willing to play for this team next year? I don't see it. I mean, you know, in this league, you know, you and I and everybody else who covers it learns the hard way to never say never. So who knows? But the the thing to me is you're talking about a team that's been to the finals three straight years that has extremely high standards and, and, and has a guy in LeBron James who's gonna be a free agent next summer. All of that means that you you don't you can't afford to, to fall back. And to me, having Kyrie in camp and trying to roll the ball out with the same group is gonna be falling back because the, the chemistry and the dynamics are, are gonna be so bad now now listen maybe lebron somehow saves it and they have a summit and they have a, a meeting of the minds and, and they kind of put this water under the bridge so to speak you know i don't see it but maybe that happens you know you've got the social media stuff that just came out the other day of you know Kyrie being at, at harrison barnes wedding and and dancing with steph curry and you know and, and this is you know the stuff that we're all kind of reading tea leaves but you know steph's doing that dance it's kind of a lebron impersonation and and just the optics are bad and you know even for me when i was in vegas at summer league and, and a lot of people wrote about this when lebron shows up to see the sixers and the lakers play and he's posing for pictures with ben simmons and he's hanging with you know Dejounte murray of the spurs now we know that he knew at that time that Kyrie was already asking for a trade and so now those are you know that situation looks different like he was kind of sending his own messages so all of that makes me feel like They've got to get a deal done. Uh, you know, you can wait a little bit, like you said. You can go ahead and, and keep surveying the landscape until late September. But uh, I think you got to pull the trigger on something by then. Talking to Sam Amick, covers the NBA for USA Today, joining me here uh, on the Dan Patrick Show. If you were Minnesota, would you have any hesitation about including Andrew Wiggins as the centerpiece of a Kyrie Irving trade? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd have hesitation because you got to think about shelf life and you got to think about the long view but I mean Kyrie's a young man so you know I don't know that it would be that much hesitation I like Wiggins you know he's a guy that that is already improving uh but when you get a guy like Jimmy Butler and you get somebody like Jamal Crawford a veteran to come in and you got a coach like Tom Thibodeau all of a sudden you know you clearly you know you're in win now mode and you've got Carl Anthony Towns as a guy that, that is going to be your anchor for a long time going forward. You've got that question of, of Wiggins, and, and not only do you include him in a deal, but if, if you somehow got Kyrie without him, um, you know, are you extending Wiggins, which kind of takes Kyrie off the table? They've got some, some questions to answer there. But, you know, that's about as good an upgrade as you are going to find in this league. It, you know, it's, I don't like the parallels that have been made to Kobe Shaq because Kyrie is not Kobe at this point in his career, but 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 in today's NBA, you know he's he's about as good a player as you're going to find come available, and there's been a lot of that this summer. You know, Paul George and Butler. So, you know, to answer your question, no, I think I would I would do that deal because I think you know Minnesota's primed to, to win right now. Yeah, look, you make a deal for Wiggins, that's one thing, but you got to get a point guard, don't you? I mean, I feel like 
I feel like there has been somehow this perception created that Derrick Rose is able to step in and be a Kyrie Irving replacement. I feel like that's it's like have people not watched the last year of Derrick right. Rose in New York. I mean, I'm not trying to bash the yeah. guy, but he's you know, he, he's a pick and roll player who can't shoot and doesn't defend. I mean, what do you what are you expecting from him here? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, take it the other way. If you don't want to bash Derek, just just shoot, just frame it as a compliment. I yeah. mean, it's the, it's the Kyrie's, you know, the Kyrie compliment. That that Kyrie, you know, deserves better than to to have people act like Derek is going to be able to to fill that gap, no problems, you know, whatsoever. Um, that's just not the case. You know, Derek has put up some decent numbers. I'm happy for him that he's been relatively healthy, uh, but. Listen, the market itself is all you got to know. I mean, my God, Kyrie's a max player, and Derrick Rose found himself in a position where by the time he agreed to go to Cleveland, he didn't have much on the table. And it was one-year deals, and, and he ends up signing a minimum. So how in the world could you process that and tell yourself that, that that's a capable replacement of a multiple-time all-star and, and champion like Kyrie Irving? So it's it's an interesting, compelling uh, substitute that we can all watch and and likely uh, see kind of the fall off. But, but no, I'm with you 100%. I don't think that's a calorie replacement at all. Yeah. Hey, great to visit with you, Sam. Always appreciate the time, man. You too, brother. Thanks, Chris. That's Sam Amick. Uh, covers the NBA over at USA Today, joining me here uh, on the Dan Patrick Show. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.